Hey you folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Play Sid Meier's Civilization 6 Rise and Fall. That's right, I got my hands on a preview build for the new Rise and Fall expansion for Civ 6 and I'm super, super duper excited to uh, to be able to bring this to you guys. Yeah, 2K for, for Axis sent me this preview code. Now, this preview code has a couple of caveats. One, it's not final, so every, you know, it might break, and also everything might change between now and release. Um, it's just got six of the new leaders, and it's also limited to only 150 turns. Now, 150 turns is a long time to see all the new stuff, but maybe not quite enough to fully finish the game. But that's okay, because it's going to mean we're going to have lots of chances to um, try out all the different civilizations. Today, we're going to get started with... I really want to play Poundmaker of the Cree here. I've been very excited to try this guy right from the start. Although, I have to say this. This guy's model is so fantastic. The detail in the hair, the texture in the clothes, and the little frilly bits over here. I'm really curious to see his, like, 3D model in the game. And I know a couple of things were shown in the um, the preview video, but um, the preview videos were recorded a little while ago, and, uh, you know, um, curious to see the final state, because I think he's going to look fantastic. But... I'm very excited to play as him, for sure. Now, typically, I would play on a standard map, but I'm going to keep it small over here because, again, we're limited to 150 turns. Now, small happens to be a 6th civilization map by default, which is very convenient. I'm also going to go ahead and set it to Pangea, um, just because if we're going to play on small and we're going to have fewer people, let's meet everyone as, as early as possible. That'll keep it exciting. Uh, again, often I might play on epic speed, which is fantastic, but because we are limited to 150 turns, I will just play on standard. And finally, normally I would be playing on deity. However, there's a lot of brand new mechanics in this game that actually make it a little bit more complicated and hard, and I don't know how they all work yet. Um, one of the big things with the, the ages, the dark ages, the normal age and the golden age, you get a lot of era score towards those things for doing things like starting religions and um, building wonders. Things that I tend to avoid on deity because it's very, very, very hard to beat a deity AI to a wonder um, or in fact found a religion because they start with a bunch of free techs um, and they get a bonus to researching and they start with like three settlers so they get way more cities right away. So they tend to like already have a lot of the technologies unlocked to build you know, wonders and found religions, and they build things faster and they research faster. So, um, mostly I just go to war and I take the wonders from them. But we really want to want to build some of those wonders if we can. I'm going to play an immortal here. Immortal is still pretty darn close to deity. It's still going to be very, very, very difficult in terms of getting any of those things, but we might have a slight chance to sneak in some wonders or something. So we'll see what we can do. In terms of religion, it'll depend very much on what our starting setup is in terms of whether or not we go for it. Now, we'll go into advanced setup over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose all the new starting leaders. So there's uh, Chandra Gupta over here, the new leader of India. We are then going to grab Genghis Khan of the Mongol Hordes, who used to be a great general but is now a leader. We're going to choose uh, Sandyuk. I have no idea if that's the way to pronounce it. Almost certainly not. Of Korea, who is awesome. Oh my god, so crazy. Probably a giant powerhouse of a sieve. Um, I'm actually not convinced that the Kree are going to be a huge powerhouse sieve. But they, they look like they're going to be a lot of fun. We're going to take Tamar of Georgia. And finally, we're going to take Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. Excellent. I believe that's all the people I have access to in this preview because I think the final release is going to be eight new civs, nine leaders because of Chandra Gupta over here is from India. So it's not a new civ, but nine new leaders. Okay. And other than that, I think we can leave everything as is. Boom. So since we're limited to 150 turns and an actual outright victory might be impossible, um, from the first you know, we'll be looking for high score and just having water. fun. But I'll also be the quiet as he goes into the Poundmaker the text Age. in a moment. To man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Poundmaker, you bear the fate of the Cree without complaint. None doubt the skill of your warriors, but they rely upon your wisdom. Striking your enemies does no good if you cannot protect your homes. As the world changes in unexpected ways, your alliances will bind you to a lasting future. Those who stand alone, die alone. That is a crazy cool little text, actually, and kind of dark at the end. Um, so here are the Kree slash Poundmaker's ability. 
Favorable terms lets you have shared visibility with all alliance types. Now, alliances are one of the things that have been significantly redone here in Rise and Fall. They are completely different from the one vanilla alliance. And as a bonus, when we have any kind of alliance, we have shared visibility, uh, which actually is quite nice. We also get a bonus to our trade routes. We get bonus food and bonus gold um, when, for our trade routes uh, if the receiving city has camps or pastures. And so that should work for internal trade routes as well as international trade routes, depending on our target, um, which is kind of cool. Another trade route thing that happens is when we unlock pottery, we get a free trader and plus one to our trade route capacity. That is a very, very, very early trader, um, which means maybe a little bit more gold early on, or if we have the ability to make an internal trade route, um, a little bit more food and production for a bit of a kickstart, which is nice. Trade routes also auto claim tiles. As they move along, they claim tiles for you as long as they're within three tiles of a, cr a Cree city. Um, that's a really cool ability, and one we'll sort of be cognizant of as we send out our trade routes. I don't think it's super powerful necessarily, you know, compared to, is it, is it Russia in this game that's got like, I settle the city and get a bunch of free tiles, but it is still going to be nice. We've got a unique land unit over here, which is a scout that's as powerful as a warrior. Scouts normally have a strength of, I want to say, 10, and warriors have a strength of 20. This scout has a strength of 20. It also starts with a free promotion. Now, this does use scout unit promotions as opposed to melee unit promotions, but it's still going to be really good for an, an um, initial defense. And our unique improvement here is the mecha wop. It unlocks with pottery. We'll look at that later, but um, it's quite nice if you've got, uh, if you can place it next to some improvements. Holy stone! And by holy stone, we're going to quick save here just in case there's a crash early on. Um, by holy stone, I'm thinking our pantheon needs to be stone circles, huh? Wow. Wow. Wow, okay. Um, now, this is an inland... This is a lake, which means we can't build... I don't believe we can build harbors in a lake. We also don't have a river, so we don't have a really good place for either a harbor or a commercial hub. Although, we can eventually build a harbor over here. It won't be adjacent to our city tile, um, but... Unless I move over. Now, it is... I could go and move over and settle adjacent to the sea. We'd lose a whole turn of production. Um, and we'd also move away from all this stone. I think we'll stay in place here. Huh. Now, part of me, and I'm sure the viewers are like, Stonehenge. But Stonehenge is one of those wonders that you almost always get beaten to on high difficulty. Because the AI is very likely to have started with the technology for Stonehenge right from the start. Although, at this point, I'm wondering if we just have, like, all the stone in the entire game here. It would enable us to found a religion, and it would probably give us great era score. Man. All right, well, let's talk about our first build. First of all, I'm going to start with our unique scout unit, the Okichita. I'm just going to say unique scout from now on, because, I mean, I'm bad at pronouncing just, like, English city names. This is going to be very, very difficult for me. Um... You can see right away, there's some slight changes to the city panel over here. Once uh, religions come into play, there'll be an extra little thingy over here as well. I think that looks nice and lovely. Um, uh, me not playing with the CQUI mod, uh, you know, always hurts my heart a little bit. The biggest complaint I'm going to have is I don't have access to my um, my builder lens, which is so handy. Uh, a lot of things from my, my CQUI mod that I like to play with shouldn't be in the base game because it would it's too noisy and too complicated too complicated for some people but i really wish that they implemented a built-in builder lens because i am so bad at like spotting improvements that need to be improved um or tiles that need to be repaired anyway um we have to choose our first research here so i could dive right into pottery if i do as soon as we finish it we get a free trade unit right now we have no one to trade with but there's a chance that um we'll have one by the time pottery finishes um, it also unlocks the MechWop over here. So MechWop always gives you plus one production and plus one housing. Most improvements just give you a half a point of housing, so that's quite nice. Um, and it gives you, first of all, it has to be built adjacent to either a luxury or a bonus resource tile. If it's adjacent to a luxury, it gives you plus one gold. It doesn't give you plus one for every luxury, based on how this is written. Um, just the one plus one gold, but that's nice. And for every two adjacent bonus resources, although it's pretty unlikely normally to get adjacent to more than two although i could build one right here it'd be adjacent to four bonus resources um it gives you an extra food which is nice and it says it'll get more production gold and food as you advance through civics and technology which sounds very nice um so this is a good place for a mech op on the other hand it's also a good place for an industrial zone although we could temporarily build the mech op for a little while over here and then replace it with an industrial zone later on 
Because industrial zones get adjacency from quarries, right? Not just mines? I think I'm remembering that correctly. Who knows? But I don't think I'm going to start with pottery. I mean, I think I'm going to start with mining here because it does give us the ability to build quarries, and that might be slightly more relevant. I suspect we'll go, like, mining the pottery, and it won't matter which order we go in, but we'll see. Um, in terms of exploration, I think I'm going to explore sort of south, maybe southwest with my first person, because um, the stone here is technically within the range of my capital city, but... I might still build another city right over here. I mean, until your population gets to the cap, um, which isn't really a thing. So, like, some overlap is good. We got more stone here. We got some nice mountains maybe for some campuses, and it looks like a river over here. I, I'm very much digging the starting area. Of course, we're going to find out that there's some other civilization right there. Um, before I go down, I'm just going to peek over here. Okay, because there's a possibility this mountain range actually connected through. That would be an interesting place for a city. Very well defended. Um, no access to fresh water. There's another river up there, which is neat. I'm going to go back to doing this, though. Um, so, population one. I'm used to being able to mouse over the city tile to see where they're working. You're working the citrus tile, which is great for the four food right from the start. The growth in the city is going to be pretty good, because probably the governor will start working these tiles afterwards. So, we'll still get two food and a little bit more production boost. Chuka, chuka, chuka. I mean, I could manually lock my tiles and do that, but, you know, that sounds like work, and who wants that? Okay, I'm pleased with this. We got fast growth. The first scout's a little bit delayed, but that's okay. So and what we'll do is as more things kick in, like as we get our first um, entry to the history timeline and we get our first uh, error score, we'll talk about that in a bit. We'll actually get four points as soon as our unique scout finishes. We'll cross the river here. So we got gems, we got this. A couple of marshes early is very nice for, for uh, city because of the three food. Obviously, we want to replace the marshes later on, but early on, they're really good. Oh, my God. Did I find a barbarian before they found me? That has never happened before. I am incredibly excited about this start. It's too bad we can't play more than 150 turns. And I'll probably still lose. Okay, so a scout did find me. But I'm betting. I'm betting it's probably the scout from here. It might not be. There might be another barbarian encampment over here. And my city's about to kick some serious hits. But let's, um, let's get started just trying to beat this guy down. That's going to be okay. Uh, we will, When we complete our scout, we will send him over here. Remember, the scout's as strong as a warrior, so he might be all right. Chuka, chuka, chuka. The big question will be if we build a second scout, or if we go right into a builder. Uh, looks like we can do another round of attacking, and then I'll probably uh, try to rest up and heal at that point. I'm going to grow again soon. Yeah, this city's growing when extremely quickly. When you find yourself quickly. in a hole, quit digging. All right, mining is done. Um, I guess we'll go straight into pottery. We might end up with a tr um, a trade unit that's sitting idle um, because we don't have anyone to trade with or because we're afraid of getting eaten by barbarians. But it doesn't actually hurt us. Um, we haven't eureka anything yet, although we could sort of pre-start some of our research. Animal husbandry doesn't help us. Um, we would like to head towards, say, irrigation, and that comes after pottery anyway. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We want irrigation to improve the citrus. So you're just going to fortify until healed, and then we'll go back and smash those guys. One more turn, and we'll get our unique unit, and we'll get our first era score. So when you get um, some things, not everything, but when you get a big thing that advances your era score, and this gives us plus four because we built our unique unit. Our very first one, we built it. We get a cool thing added to our timeline over here. We're in the ancient era. We got four era score. I think this looks awesome. I love the idea of this timeline. I mean, the timeline by itself has no gameplay implications whatsoever, other than it's a good way to track your era score bonuses. Although there are ways to get era scores that don't show up on this. But I think it looks awesome. Now, so we got four points toward the era score, and we can mouse over things over here. Our current score is four. When we enter the next era... If our era score is below 15, we will enter a dark age. If it's a, if it's 15 or above, we will be a normal age. And if it's 25 or above, we will enter a golden age. And we'll see what those things do when we get there. This blue line around the next turn button, this fills up as I work to get out of a dark age. And then it'll start to fill up golden after that. Um, because we are a fairly early game civilization with an early unique unit and an early terrain improvement, tile improvement, we'll get a lot of early error score. Um, but yeah, things like religions and wonders and things like that are good ways to get a lot of error score as well. We haven't met any neighbors yet. So, 
I think... Now, normally, I would go scout into Slinger. And the idea is, um, the Slinger is good for defense. And if you can kill something with the Slinger, then you get the Eureka towards Archery. However, I think what I'm going to do is build a second unique scout. And the reason for it is, um, it's, again, as strong as a warrior. So it's going to be pretty good for early game defense. And it will let us find more things in the map a little quicker, which is great because a lot of the goodie huts, not that we found any yet, will give you a bonus to your era score, which is very nice. So I think we're going to skip the early slinger, which is a bit unusual, but we're going to do that. Part of me is also wondering about going straight into a builder here and starting to um, build some quarries here, which would be great for improving our starting city. The problem is we're... There's possibilities for us to have barbarians from like every single direction going on here. And so I think we're going to need the extra military might. So I'm going to go ahead and build another unique scout. Now, speaking of unique scout, we get to start the game. So in addition to be as strong as a warrior, we start the game with a free promotion, which is great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to... Ooh, that's tempting. I was going to say, I'm going to take two moves and then promote, because promoting ends your, your turn. I'm tempted to actually whack this scout one time before I promote. Which I'm going to do. Because I can always, like, heal from the promotion as well. Because God knows killing barbarian scouts is incredibly, incredibly satisfying. Uh, we're two turns away from getting our plus five versus barbarian trait as well. Which I think will be timed out nicely for this warrior healing up as well. So I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, you haven't moved. Okay, I'm going to keep wailing on you then. I'm okay with that. And then, yeah, again, we'll promote afterwards. Without, like, the mod, like, big reminding me, like, burp, 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 you have a promotion Man waiting to be done. Um, I tend to be kind of bad about, like, accidentally Separated missing the promotions, but I'll remember this one. He is the so, we got a policy change. We're going to grab discipline here for the combat strength. It is worth noting that as Poundmaker, getting surveys is especially nice. Double experience for recon units from exploration. Your unique scouts are recon units. We're going to grab God King here because we want a Pantheon, in general, a Pantheon as early as possible. But we really, really, really want to get stone circles in this particular game. I'm really hoping we find a, um, a goodie hut that gives us some faith, if we can. So I'm going to go and finish whopping the scout. Excellent. And we'll finally go ahead and promote this unit afterwards. But, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Um, what am I at, hit point-wise? Okay, so no, I will rest you one more turn before we go. And I will start researching. doesn't really matter which one. Um, I will start with foreign trade. And if we haven't gotten the um, the inspiration by the time we're halfway, we'll go and swap, assuming you remember. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move... Ah. So I'm just going to wait there. And I'm going to give me the eh, Ranger or Alpine. They're both really good for extra movement. We'll just go with Ranger here. So faster movement in uh, woods and jungles. So we heal ourselves up. So that scout was from another encampment. Hmm. So, our little unique scout here isn't going to be doing a lot of scouting right now. He's going to be going to a town on this guy over here. So, the one downside with our scouts is we don't get in, we don't get upgrades that give us more attack, strength, and melee. <sighs> yeah, this start... Ooh, we have to go and try to beat that guy up because he's just going to start hitting us right away with impunity and we'll never heal. Um, this start is going to be really barbarific. I'm thinking I'm actually going to ignore this camp over here, because it hasn't been woke. It's not woke. Whereas this scout is going to want to wake up someone, so we're going to have to run up here and chase him down. Possibly with my second unique scout as well. Yeah, we're going to be really delayed on our I actual scouting here. must feel happy in the good potter's hand. So, we got pottery. Oh, he actually meleeed me. All right. Finish that guy before he can hit me some more, and then I should be able to finish off this camp next, which is great. He does have a promotion waiting for him, but we're going to have to finish all these things up before we uh, we take the promotion. Um, I could start doing a half-research thing. I'll just get Animal Husbandry because it can't be Eureka, and we want it at some point, no matter what. Uh, this guy could spend a turn healing at some point, but no. We're going to see if we can chase down that scout before he wakes up a barbarian encampment. And we literally have nothing to do with our trader over here. So, that's kind of annoying. Wow, what a weird start. Well, it's not that weird, to be honest. But we are in a little bit of a tight area. Bam. Okay. Clear to Barbarian Outpost. We get a boost towards Military Tradition. And we found our first Goody Hut. And I guess we killed three Barbarians now, so we got a boost towards Bronze Working as well. Excellent. Trade Rat still can't do anything. 
Um, you have the promotion for free movement through the woods. If delicate arch Ooh. has any significance, it lies, You're new. Venture, in the power of the odd and unexpected to startle the senses and surprise the mind out of their roots of habit. At least I think you're new. I'm pretty sure you're new. Plus two faith and plus one gold to adjacent tiles. Very nice. A lot of desert over here. Oh, if only there was some sort of wonder you could build to make desert tiles be really, really good. Okay, we might have to try to do something with the Petra. Although it's so hard on high difficulties to pull off. God knows we've lost games from trying to pursue the Petra before. Um... Especially since we might still be delaying our first campus a little bit here. Uh, there's too much of a chance that we'll die if we go after him. So I'll just go ahead and promote to Battle Cry. I'd like to bop him, but we can't. We still have nowhere to trade route. How much money do we have? Not enough to buy anything. Well, that's not strictly true. I think we could buy, yeah, like a slinger or something. But no, no, we'll just wait. Typically, we want to build like or buy a, a builder or something. So I can move up here and still have movement left. There's another goody hut there. Um, I'll take the attack and then start resting. We'll, we'll see about clearing this. So yeah, my scout's not doing much scouting. But yeah, we don't have any nearby neighbors. So we will want to expand as quickly as possible. First of all, because we have the opportunity to. And secondly, the faster we expand, the less place there are for barbarians. Some city-state just got obliterated already. Barbarians approach. Oh, that scout saw me. But... I do have this new scout awake. And again, I'm going to slightly delay our promotion in exchange for going and bopping him. And he might make it back to his camp and wake it up, in which case we'll be really happy to have a bank promotion here to do a quick heal. I really, really want to get a builder going at this point because I really want to start improving this terrain. Uh, foreign trade still fine for now. I don't know where that scout went. We'll finally pop this. A free builder! Does that change things? I would say it does, because um, ideally you would like to always be working improved tiles. So one builder is only going to do three tiles. We have a population of four, but it's going to be pretty darned okay. So I'm going to change my production here. We will try to get a settler out as quickly as possible. A little bit risky with all the barbarians, but I think it's going to be worth it. And I'm going to go and start... Uh, building a bunch of quarries over here. Boosting masonry, which is very nice. We are almost out of the Dark Age already. Um, and again, we don't have a... Uh, we can have a few things in here. Bring gifts, join the civilization. Oh, first major civilization to set um, eyes on this world wonder. That, or natural wonder. That's the other thing that rewards early exploration. Clearing out the encampment over here. So we get error score from that. That's nice. You get less error score from clearing barbarians with each error that goes by because they're not as dangerous. Uh, so you're just going to sit there and rest for a little bit. Next turn. I hope he doesn't go straight to his camp, but he probably will. Yeah, so that camp is now woken up, which is a little bit scary because they will be spawning some bad guys. I'm going to go here. Oh! It's a hill with a four, so it ate all three movement. I was not thinking that. I was thinking, it'll cost me two and I'll still be able to attack. Well, at least I'm in a safe location. I guess that counts for something. So I'm just going to quarry up everything. Well, I might want to save one charge for my terrain improvement. Because that'll give me an error score. And it's actually going to be pretty good. I might want to buy this tile. Is there... I don't remember if there's a mode... If I go here, does it show me? Okay, you're going to want to build that way. If I buy this, this would be a great spot to put my terrain improvement. Because it would be adjacent to four bonus resources. I think I might do that, actually. I can wait until next turn, but that's okay. Um, you don't have a promotion. You could use a little bit of healing. I guess I will make you heal here. There's a possibility you're going to have to run over and help us defend the homeland. We still have no one to trade with. I can't believe we haven't found a city-state yet. Let alone any neighbors. I did, like, set up the map correctly, right? It doesn't tell me what the map setting was, but... Um... Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. So, city. We're going to purchase a tile right here. And this becomes a great place to build the Mechawop. It'll give you the plus one production, which is always what it gives as a base, and it'll be giving me plus two food because of all the adjacencies here. 
Again, this might get replaced by a industrial zone later on, but in the meantime, it's going to be fantastic. So we got a boost towards craftsmanship because it's our third uh, tile improvement, but also we built the mecha wop over here. This is our unique tile improvement, so we get plus four era score from doing that. Still nothing to trade with. All right, I'm going to sit in safer terrain. Now, he's probably going to spawn things next turn. So my idea was attack and then promote to heal. Is there any chance if he spawns something, can it attack right away? And would that kill me? Well, let's... We're going we're gonna to try to risk it, because I think we need to accelerate our barbarian clearing a bit. Okay, it worked out good. So I'm just going to promote you now. Um... Yeah, we'll just give you the ranger one as well. That's going to be fine. You are all healed up, so I'm actually going to start swinging you back up as well, but you may as well explore a bit on the way. No one to trade with. And, yeah, I'd like to check this spot here, I'm because it might be pigs. somewhere we settle. Don't Animal husbandry doesn't help us right now, but it is going to be nice to have. And we might need to unlock archery sooner rather than later. Now, there's also the religion idea. We may want to found a religion. If so, we need astrology. I mean, I don't know if building the Stonehenge is, is feasible here. Especially if we're thinking about maybe doing Petra stuff. But we have no nearby neighbors. We might need our religion. Now, of course, we can just do it with a holy site as well. On the other hand, seeing where iron is as soon as possible is awfully nice. And we might need archery. Do we go for the freaking religion? I don't know, man. I think we're going to work on bronze working. I think we're going to stick to the to the basics. We're going to take enough of a risk with maybe going after the Petra. Okay, you are ready to go. You haven't spawned a unit yet, which is good. You're healthy, so we're going to go and whack that guy some. Um, size 4, you're actually going to grow again really soon here. And you are working at Mechwap. Oh yeah, 4 food, 1 production. Very nice little tile. Yeah, our, our capital city is growing very quick. And the Mechwap giving us all that housing is nice. So there you go, there's our first unit spawn there. Um, I'll go check out the coast here. We've got Amber. Amber's a new luxury. It can spawn on land or in the sea. You're just going to fortify until healed, and you've got a warrior that's coming in soon. Uh, that brings us awfully low, so I will heal a little bit before we make a move there. Still want to pop that goodie hut before someone else does it. Yeah, they did attack me. Oh, that's interesting. Um... It's very risky to do this, because the, the warrior will attack us. Hopefully it can't kill us, but I'm going to go and pop this before it spawns anything else. So this is danger on the doorstep of one of our cities, giving us even more era score over here. So we're definitely not going to be in a dark age, and in fact, we're trying to advance towards an early golden age, which would be pretty incredible if we could pull that off. Um, I'm definitely not attacking, so I'm just going to go ahead and fortify here. He'll attack me, but I'll have a fortified bonus, or should. Well, actually, I won't because I did uh, move this turn to clear that. And actually, I might just want to run away. Like that. And the scout did attack my city over here. Slightly being damaged. Insufficient amenities. Uh, just because it grew? I think so. Yeah, size 5, and it doesn't have a luxury yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys would be standing on each other, so that's no good. You can't trade yet. Ah, you're almost full. Let's go ahead and give this guy another attack here. Thump. Excellent. So, I think settling south is actually going to be kind of nice. So they're attacking a little bit more over here, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to move you into the city, because you'll heal faster. You also give the city a little bit more of a defensive boost. And we can clear this. Excellent. And we get another plus two arrow score. Okay. So in a way, I guess early barbarians are maybe not as bad as, as you know, I would normally associate. Move you there. You need to rest. Now I'm going to start moving the settler. I think I'm just going to move him out as is. Hmm... So, for settling, part of me is thinking I could settle here. This becomes a great place for a harbor improvement. Because um, it's adjacent to the city, so it's plus two gold. It'll be adjacent to a sea resources. I assume this counts as a sea resource. 
I mean, it's the same. It's on land as well, but it's got to count as a sea resource, I would hope. So that's a pretty good little harbor there. Of course, we want harbors and commercial hubs to get more trade routes. However, you need to go up to like the market to get your your free your extra trade route. Now you don't just get it from the commercial hub in itself. But there's also something he said about settling in land. These are all really strong positions. Um, arguably stronger. There's also the idea of not settling on the coast directly. For example, if I settled here, I would get access to all this rice eventually. Um, it also locks in the diamonds ASAP. So if we get, actually, I think I have enough for a builder here. Uh, we could mine that diamond, get a little bit of amenities going on, which is nice. We still don't have um, irrigation, so I still can't do the citrus. Well, tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in this video here because we've come up on 30 minutes and that seems like a good place to do that. I will pontificate. I don't know if that's a good word for it, but I will think about where I might want to put this initial city. Obviously, um, if we're going to do the Petron, we're going to have to go north, but we don't have to rush that city first. We can get a few more functional cities um, ahead of time. And yeah, with no one around, we probably want to expand fairly greedily, especially since it will prevent barbarians from spawning in those areas. So uh, we might be doing some very, very aggressive settling. Thanks for watching, folks. And hey, if this is your first time uh, at the channel, welcome, and I hope you subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.